Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Now, a couple of months ago, I did a video in Brussels at the Brussels Beer Festival, uh, trying to get to the bottom of the incestuous but amazing Belgian beer scene. And that's given me a real taste of what's going on underneath those big, big brewers in Belgium. Uh, so I'm going on like a beer safari, uh, going all around uh, West Flanders, finding all the best new microbreweries. And I'm gonna bring back the best beers I try for Brad, who is not the biggest Belgian fan. His heart's somewhere in Portland, Oregon, really. Uh, and I'm gonna convince him that sours, that doubles, that triples, that quads are some of the best beers in the world. So I'm at the first stop, which is Tilquin, uh, and you have a special beer that we hope will persuade Brad that sour beers are fantastic, right? Yeah, this one is a quetch. It's a sort of a plum, and it's a traditional lambic style beer. It's sour, no sweet, not sweet, but the fruits are bringing a lot of fruitiness to the beer, yeah. which makes it perhaps more accessible. So a huge fruity aroma, but still that sherbetty, ciderous kind of quality yeah. as well. Yeah, and the fact that I'm a, a blender, I use four Lambics born in the Manger and Cantillon. I think my, my beers are a bit more accessible because the taste is more complete, more round. Yeah. It doesn't go only in one direction. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, so I'm here at Guten Tag uh, with um, Git, who is not only the, the, the founder, the owner, the head brewer, you also built the brewery. In you fact, are the builder. That's yeah. correct. What on earth possessed you to do that? Well, in fact, uh, years ago, I started as a home brewer. I ended up in the beer uh, industry. I always had the dream of, of an home brewery, of course. As I was a lot in breweries, I saw a lot of scrap materials and I bought all these things. I decided to, to follow a welding course. And so from the, from the one came the other and uh, three years after the start of the weld, first weld, I had my own brewery. Um, the brewery has also a little bit developed to make this type of beer. So a really pale, uh, blunt color, mm -hmm. so with a low thermal load in the, in the copper. It's got this huge aroma of spices and banana, and it, but it's actually very, very smooth, very, very crisp with yeah, just enough bitterness. That's correct. So I'm here at Olvin, uh, which is right in the middle of Flanders, where they make the Flanders Red or the or the Oud Brun, as they call it in Belgium. Uh, and I've got a bottle of undressed Olvin's old brown beer, uh, which has been aged in this giant thing behind me, a 75 hectolitre foudre. Um, what's really cool is that this 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 barrel was filled in 2012 and has never been empty since. So they take two thirds out to bottle leave a third at the bottom and then just put more new beer on top. The last stop was one of my favourite Belgian breweries, De Dolle. Translating literally as the Mad Brewers, they make some of the most interesting and delicious Belgian beers using a kit from the 1920s. But more on them later. To the Brad Pad! Bradders? Johnny, welcome back to the Brad Pad. You've been on a little mission. Yeah, I've almost recovered. Almost? Yeah, so I went to, in total, uh, in two days, 11 breweries. So the first place I went is somewhere that many people will have heard of, uh, but probably not tasted. Mm -hmm. So we went to Tilquin. So he blends words from breweries that people were killed to have uh, to his own special recipe, which he, he kind of gave away. He just said, well, it's a third of this, third of this, third of this. But I'm pretty sure we couldn't do the same if we tried. Okay. Um, but this one, like he said earlier in the video, is made with plums. Plums? Aged on plums. Wow. Mmm. Do you get plum? I do, on the nose, certainly. It's pokey, isn't cider. it? Yeah, that's that's the Brett getting ciders. Yeah. It's much more soft than you think it's going to be. Yeah, it's not, I mean, from the Brett, you're not getting the total farmyard vibe going. No. On. It's it's really mellow, it's beautiful it's drinking, actually. Absolute stunner. Mmm. So beer number two, this guy has my absolute favourite story of a brewery ever. Uh, he worked in breweries for years and slowly collected scrap metal. Right. And then once he had enough, he built his own brewery. And um, wow. what he's produced is a Belgian stronghouse, so kind of like, kind of like Duval, but as you're about to discover, much, much crisper. So he's like a kind of mad scientist, handyman, yeah. genius brewer. How good does that smell? Mmm. 
I get those little banana foam sweets. Sounds good as well, Joey. <laughs> it's the sound of the sea. Oh yeah, the mouthfeel is certainly velvety. Velvety smooth. Yeah. I, I, it's dangerous, as most Belgian beers are, because that doesn't taste that strong to me. No, it's it's eight. Wow. I thought it might have been 8.2, but it's eight. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that you'd put that either way easier than a lager. Dude, but that's, you shouldn't. That's sweet. So the third beer, and I'm worried you're going to hate this. Ah. Um, so we're in West Flanders, which is well known for Duchess de Bourgogne and, mm -hmm. uh, and Roddenbach. Uh, and we have a much more challenging version of the Flemish Red. Ooh. So Olveen have just started only doing sour beers now. Okay. Um, but they have, I think when we went there, they had 20 of their own sour beers on tap. In wow. In a very nice bar. I like it. Okay. Do you get do you get a huge amount of oak? A little bit of smoke, a little bit of caramel. Yeah, not not hugely oaky. I'm getting caramel vibes. Right. That's actually smoother than I remember. I, I feel think like it's I've oversold smooth. it now. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not like wow, it's in my head can't handle it, this is crazy. Yeah. That's very profitable. Yeah, it's good beer. Great stuff. So the final beer I brought you is I have to admit I'd had it before. Uh, and it's one of my favourite breweries, but the opportunity to go there, you just don't pass it up. Uh, and that's De Dollar Blarage, which means the Mad Brewers. Great pronunciation, Johnny. <laughs> it's buddy, I'm learning. I'm glad I, I didn't have to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they founded in 1980, but they've never grown because they don't want to potentially compromise anything. And I think they just yeah. quite enjoy that they have this mad, mad brewery. I just get, I get like, I get peach yogurt and I get... Chardonnay grapes, and I get banana, and I get clove, and I get oh, it's just amazing. This is very complicated. There's a lot going yeah. on. You're much better at describing all that than I am. But <laughs> it just it like, smells, it smells nice. nice. <laughs> it smells great, actually. It's one of those beers that has. I'm I'm struggling for the word, and if anyone out there can tell me what the word is, it is like Moorishness, but I don't want to say that about alcohol. Yes. But it it's just got that kind of lip smacky. Back of your cheek, kind of. Not quite umami. Ah, it's like an umami type. Yeah, bite, it is but exactly. Not really umami. But it's not say. I mean, this is yeah. a slightly sweet beer, but it is like umami. That kind of thing you crave, like brown meat. Yeah. So I've been delighted by your reaction because it was a really, really tough job to go to ten breweries. Oh, uh, such a tough job, Johnny. But an even tougher job to whittle it down to four to show you. Yes. Uh, and I've got some of the other favourites up here, particularly this Belgian single uh, made with uh, wet hops. So not dried hops. Awesome. It's really, really good. And it was made at a hop farm in Pop Poplinge. Wow. And that's really, really special as well. So cutting that out was was tough. Um, which one's been your favourite? For me, it's got to be the Plum Lambic. So it was great. I yeah. mean, it's, it had that sweetness that I thought was, I mean, not super sour. Yeah. By delving down, I've discovered some amazing things. Some amazing stories like Good and Dag. Uh, some amazing, amazing old school brewers like Dollar. And there's so much more gold out there that we don't know about. So let us know if you know any. Cheers, buddy. Cheers.